So here at Loyola, we have several projects focusing on uh, immune targeting of cells that express uh, molecules of the melanocyte lineage, and that can occur in, in vitiligo, uh, where we see spontaneous targeting of melanocytes. Uh, leading to autoimmune disease, but we also have research where we try to develop vaccines to more actively target uh, cells of the melanocyte lineage that malignantly transform, as in melanoma. We think that vitiligo is an autoimmune disease that involves uh, skin infiltration by cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and upon entering the skin and coming in touch with their, uh, their particular antigen that they recognize, which is part of the melanocyte, that leads to the elimination of pigment cells, forming the pigment in the skin, and for that reason, uh, that ultimately leads to progressive depigmentation of the skin, and that's the phenotype that we know to be vitiligo. This particular project is focused particularly on a uh, heat shock protein called uh, Inducible Heat Shock Protein 70, and what we've found out about this particular uh, heat shock protein is that it, uh, upon overexpression of that protein within the skin, uh, we see the enhanced depigmentation uh, occurring and as well as a more sustained depigmentation. So we figured that it has a role in precipitating the autoimmune disease vitiligo. So our project right now is to see whether we can uh, establish a unique role for that particular heat shock protein, thinking that if there, it, it plays a non-redundant role that we may be able to target that molecule in a, uh, and come to some kind of therapeutic intervention for the autoimmune disease vitiligo. This particular publication then uh, addresses the, the unique role of heat shock protein uh, 70 in deep pigmentation. And what we've tried to see is whether heat shock protein 70 overexpression itself would be enough to, uh, to induce depigmentation in an animal model that develops spontaneous vitiligo. Uh, then we went on to also see whether heat shock protein 70 itself, in, in its absence, whether we would still be able to, to induce depigmentation. So we tried this in knockout mice. Uh, and apart from that, we also tried to establish the uh, immunological profile uh, that we would find in the mice as a consequence. Uh, to establish uh, overexpression of heat shock protein 70 uh, in mice, we relied on a, a gene gun vaccination model uh, in which we actually uh, take either uh, DNA encoding heat shock protein 70 or in this case a uh, melanocyte antigen optimized TRP1. Uh, this is then uh, precipitated onto gold particles. Uh, which are then uh, fed through uh, Teflon tubing, and we can actually uh, cut these into what are termed bullets, which contain uh, DNA encoding, uh, the DNA of choice. Uh, we then use uh, gene guns, uh, which is a, a technique in which the uh, bullets are inserted and rapidly fired into the, uh, the skin of the mice, and we can then uh, assess the expression of these proteins uh, by looking at depigmentation. So to assess depigmentation in mice, we rely on a flatbed scanner uh, in which we image uh, the ventral and dorsal uh, surfaces of the hair of the mice. Um, we do this both pre and post vaccination, uh, so this is done over time so we can actually see uh, a depigmentation response occur. To calculate uh, depigmentation in mice, we rely on Adobe Photoshop in which images of the mice both pre and post scan are taken. Uh, we then use uh, luminosity software uh, to calculate the levels of depigmentation in these mice. So in addition to depigmentation, we also wanted to assess the, the role that HSP70 has on the immune system. Uh, here we used a uh, technique called in vivo CTL in which splenocytes from unvaccinated mice are pulsed with the antigen that we actually used to vaccinate the mice with. Um, we then can take uh, these populations of cells and label them with a fluorescent label, and we do this in different concentrations. So when we view these uh, by fax analysis, we can actually view these as separate populations. Uh, so these splenocytes are then injected periorbitally into the mice that were vaccinated. 24 hours later, we take the spleens and then assess uh, the levels of killing by actually looking at the ratio of these different populations of cells. Um, another powerful thing about this technique is that we can actually visualize different uh, fluorochromes, in this case FITC or, uh, or uh, Horizon V450, and you can actually look at different populations of cells. In our paper, we actually looked at an irrelevant peptide HPV as well as uh, the vac uh, antigen that we vaccinated with, which is TRP1, to assess killing. 
As part of these uh, studies, we were able to show that in vitro, dendritic cells that we cultured uh, would not be activated if we included an antibody to a heat shock protein 70. And we followed up in vivo by, uh, by, in, in, by vaccinating mice that lacked uh, heat shock protein 70 and were able to show that in that, that case, there was no depigmentation occurring. Uh, furthermore, we were able to show that in a, in a transgenic mouse model uh, that spontaneously develops vitiligo, that heat shock protein 70, as and of itself, was sufficient to uh, induce the depigmentation response. In conclusion, with this particular manuscript, we were able to demonstrate a uh, unique and non-redundant role for inducible heat shock protein 70 in precipitating the autoimmune disease vitiligo, which will hopefully set us up for the development of therapeutic strategies to target this disease.